Hi, so in the next two capsules, we'll be discussing menopause. It's a large topic, so I've split it into two. So why do women get menopause? In nearly all species of animals, the reproductive capacity in females ends with end of life. But in human beings, along with two types of whales, uh, you live a substantial part of your life after you have completed your reproductive capacity. To understand why, let's look at the orca family or the killer whale family. In the orca, we have the uh, grandmother killer whales who have finished with their reproductive capacity. They don't compete with the younger females for mate or even for food much. And uh, they have a significant function in the pod or the pod of killer whales. And their function is to help their daughters, offspring, um, learn life skills. So in other words, they help their daughters nurture their young. And this uh, grandmother hypothesis, what we call, uh, seems to have uh, a substantial benefit to the species. So obviously this grandmother hypothesis has worked very well even in our human species. But our women have actually uh, grown beyond uh, nurturing grandchildren and they've gone into education, business and even, you know, going to space. Uh, an example would be uh, Peggy Whitson who uh, commanded the International Space Station when she was 56 years old. So even the sky is not the limit. The effect of menopause is that you have to undergo two transitions. One is uh, the puberty transition where in which from uh, a non-reproductive state you have to become reproductive and from a reproductive state you have to undergo the menopause transition to a non-reproductive stage. Because our body resists change, uh, we suffer it. And because we suffer it, often we call menopause as a disease, which I can assure you it is not. So menopause is defined as a complete cessation of your periods for more than one year. So therefore, it's a retrospective diagnosis. After you've achieved menopause, we can say, okay, you got menopause. We can't tell you that you are in menopause or you are about to get menopause. Once you've finished one full year of no periods, yes, we can call it as menopause. The average age of menopause is around 51. If you refer to my capsule on what is normal, you realize that, no, we don't have one particular year. We have a range. And we have a particularly large range which starts from 40 years all the way up to 55 years. So what is a climactric? A climactric is a period of time in which your hormone levels are decreasing. We see it among men as well as women. But we use the word climactric usually for men. And for women, we use the word menopausal transition. The menopausal transition can extend anything between 4 years to up to 10 years and it culminates in menopause. The menopause signifies that uh, all the ovarian follicles or the eggs which are there within the ovary have been depleted. And since the follicles which uh, produce estrogen and progesterone are depleted, you don't have any more estrogen and progesterone. So all the symptoms of menopausal transition comes from this lack of estrogen and progesterone. A bit of background a newly born baby girl has more than a million of follicles in her ovaries. By the time she hits puberty, she would be having around 400,000 follicles in her ovaries. By the time she is around 40, she would have a few thousand and when she hits menopause, she would have close to nil. For every follicle which ovulates, we are losing around 1,000 follicles. So, as we grow older, the number of follicles are decreasing and it is inevitable. And therefore, menopause is inevitable. So, how do you know if you have attained menopause? Well, if you finished with one year of not having periods, well, that's menopause. Do you need tests to prove it? 
Well, we have some tests known as FSH and EMH which would help us, but do we need it? No, we don't need it. Menopause is diagnosed clinically. No periods for one year in a lady who is plus 45 is menopause. Are there any tests which will help us predict when you will have menopause? Now that's a question which is very, very commonly asked to me. Doctor, when would I be having menopause? Is menopause close? Am I getting into menopausal transition? Well, unfortunately, we do not have any tests. Uh, very vague tests. We have that FSH test and an AMH test which will give us some clues. But a probably best guess, uh, maybe an educated guess, but more guess than educated. I wouldn't bet on it. So in other words, we can't predict when you are going to get menopause. Now, nearly all the complaints which uh, ladies have are related to the menopausal transition. And a few of them are related to actual menopause. So I'll enumerate most of the complaints women have during the menopausal transition. And I'll probably take most of them up in a separate capsule. So the classical feature of this menopausal transition is hot flush. A close cousin of hot flush is night sweat. And because you have night sweat, you have lack of sleep. And because you have lack of sleep, you'd be having uh, a tired day or easy fatigability and also a lot of irritability. It could also be a little bit of loss of memory, anxiety, and mood changes. Other common complaints are uh, painful intercourse, lack of libido, lot of urinary complaints, and a dry vagina. So the long-term effects of uh, menopause is uh, nearly always related to the bone density. And there's a profound uh, decrease in bone density after menopause. And that leads to bone pains and fractures. We also see an increased incidence of heart disease after menopause. And the reason being that as long as you have estrogen in your body, your estrogen is actually protecting you from heart disease. I mean, how many of you have heard of a 30-year-old lady having a heart attack? But I'm sure you would have heard about men around 30s and 40s having heart attacks. So estrogen protects uh, women from heart disease. But once you hit menopause, you don't have estrogen, so you've lost your protection. So can we treat you? So the first question we ask is, do we need to treat you? We need to remember that menopausal transition and menopause are basically physiological functions. It's a normal part of a normal woman's life. And therefore, it's not a disease. I'm sure most of our pharmaceutical industry would like to make it a disease, but I can assure you it is not a disease. But we also know that millions of women around the world suffer the consequences of this menopausal transition and menopause. So we need to have some balance. On one side, I cannot ignore the fact that a lot of women are actually suffering this menopausal transition. But also I know that I do not want to treat a normal physiological time in a woman's life and then cause you harm. So it's a balance. And this particular balancing act which we have to do while treating our ladies who are undergoing menopausal transition as well as menopause will be the topic of my next capsule. So I'll see in my next capsule on the treatment aspects of this menopause and menopausal transition. Alright, so I'll see you soon. Bye.